In today's video, I'm going to show you how to knit a blanket that I have named Lola. Now, full disclosure, this is not the blanket that I set out to knit when I first cast it on about two weeks ago. It's a happy accident. I am awful for not knitting samples before I jump right in and start knitting a blanket. I am really gung-ho. I just cast on my stitches and start knitting. And about three repeats into this blanket, I realised I'd knitted something slightly different to what I'd actually intended to knit. But I liked the way it looked so much. So here we are a few weeks later and this is the blanket that I'm teaching you to knit, not the one that I actually intended to show you how to work. Lola is a 24 row repeat. That means that you have a few more rows to remember, but on the plus side, you have less repeats to work before you have a finished blanket. To knit a blanket like I have, that is approximately 60 centimeters wide by 80 centimeters long, you are going to need 400 grams of double knit yarn. That's three weight or light worsted if you are in another part of the world to the UK. You are also going to need some circular needles like this. Straight needles won't work for this project. The stitches that you have to cast on are simply too many to fit on straight needles. So you want to have some circular needles that are about 80 to 120 centimeters long to accommodate all those stitches that you cast on. You're also going to need some embroidery scissors so that you can break your yarn, a tapestry needle to sew in your ends. And also I find it really handy to use two stitch markers to differentiate between your borders here and your middle panel that produces all that texture. You can make your blanket any size you want. The pattern multiple for this blanket is six plus two for the middle textured panel and then 18 stitches for your side border. To make your blanket bigger, all you would need to do is cast on more stitches for the middle section, but the 18 stitches for your side borders will always remain the same. If you want to replicate the blanket that I have made here, which is 60 centimetres wide by 80 centimetres long, you are going to need to cast on a total of 140 stitches. That stitch count includes your middle panel, and your side border. So just a total of 140 stitches would be your cast on if you want to replicate the blanket that I have made here. For the purpose of today's video, I'm just going to knit a very small sample. So I'm just going to go ahead and cast on 50 stitches, but you can cast on as many or as few stitches as you want to for your blanket. And don't forget that if you're wanting to replicate the blanket that you saw in the introduction, then you need to cast on a total of 140 stitches. I always like to use the long tail cast on method, but if you have a cast on method that you prefer to use and you want to use it for this project, then please feel free to do so. It really doesn't matter which cast on method you use. The first 16 rows of this blanket make up our bottom garter stitch edging, which is always the first part that you work when you are knitting a blanket like this one. So you want to work your first 16 rows as follows. You want to knit every stitch until you have one stitch left on your left hand needle. So you want to knit all the way across until you have just one stitch left to work. And instead of knitting this final stitch, we are going to slip it purlwise with the yarn in front, which gives you a really nice, neat braided edge up the long side of your blanket. To slip it purlwise with the yarn in front, you first need to pop your working yarn to the front of your work. And as a continental knitter, the way I do this is just to pick it up with my right hand needle. Then I'm going to pop my right hand needle into that final stitch as if to purl. So going in from right to left, not from left to right. And then I'm just going to pass that stitch from my left hand needle onto the right hand needle, remove the left hand needle, and then lift my working yarn to the front of my work so I don't accidentally create another stitch. So that is the first of our 16 rows worked and completed and you now need to go away and work this same row 15 more times so that you have worked a total of 16 rows. Once you've done that, come back here and then we can jump into that middle panel of the blanket. After the end of your 16th row, your work should look a little bit like this piece of work here. If, like me, you've used the long tail cast on, then you should have the smooth side of your cast on here. And then you should have eight garter ridges 
facing you and from now on this is what we will class as the right side of our work so the first of our 24 row repeats is actually a wrong side row so every odd number will be a wrong side row and every even numbered row will be a right side row from this point forward. Before you start your first row you are going to want to grab two stitch markers because on row one the first time we work it we're going to do just a little bit of setup work to get these stitch markers in place so that we have a nice definitive mark for our side borders so that we don't have to really count stitches when we are working those side borders. Row one, you want to knit the first nine stitches. Then you want to grab the first of your two stitch markers and pop it onto your right hand needle because that marks the side border. Then you want to purl the next two stitches. And then you want to work knit four, purl two until there are nine stitches left on your left hand needle and if you've counted your stitches correctly that should come after a purl two. When you have those nine stitches left on your left hand needle you want to pop a stitch marker onto your right hand needle to mark the opposite side border and then knit the next eight stitches. And then just like with our bottom garter stitch border, we are going to slip the last stitch purlwise with the yarn in front. And that completes row one. Row two, you are going to knit every single stitch, slipping the stitch markers as you come across them. And then when you get to the final stitch, instead of knitting that final stitch, you are going to slip it purlwise with the yarn in front. Row three, you want to knit the stitches up until you hit the marker, so that's knit nine. Slip the marker over and then purl the next two stitches. Then work knit four, purl two, all the way along until you hit your next marker and if you've counted your stitches right then that should come after a purl two so your pattern repeat across the row is knit four purl two all the way across until you hit the next marker which should come after a purl two slip the marker over and knit the next eight stitches And then the final stitch you're going to slip purlwise with the yarn in front. Row four, knit every single stitch, slip the markers as you come to them and instead of knitting the final stitch you're going to slip it purlwise with the yarn in front. Row five, knit nine stitches. Slip the marker over as you come to it and purl the next two stitches. Then the stitch repeat all the way along until the next marker is knit four, purl two. So you're going to repeat that pattern of six stitches all the way along until you hit your next marker. And assuming that you've counted your stitches correctly, that should come after a purl two. Slip your second marker over and knit the next eight stitches. And then slip that final stitch purlwise with the yarn in front. Don't forget to always lift this yarn to the front of your work so you don't accidentally create another stitch. Row six, knit all the way across, slip those stitch markers as you come to them and then don't forget for that final stitch we don't knit it, we slip it purlwise with the yarn in front to carry on working that really nice side edge. Row seven, you want to start by knitting nine stitches and that should take you to your first stitch marker. Slip the stitch marker over and purl the next two stitches. And then you want to work across until you hit the next stitch marker and you want to work knit four, purl two. And if you've counted your stitches correctly, you should hit that after you have worked a purl two. 
slip that second stitch marker over and knit to the next eight stitches. And the final stitch of the row, you slip purlwise with the yarn in front. Row eight, you just want to knit all the way across, slip those stitch markers as you come to them and slip the last stitch purlwise with the yarn in front. Row nine starts with a knit nine. That should take you to your first marker and you're just going to slip it over. Then purl the next two stitches. And then we're going to work across to our next stitch marker using the following six stitch repeat. You're going to knit four and then purl two all the way along until you hit your second marker and you should hit that second marker after a purl two. Slip the second marker over and knit eight. And then finish off your row by slipping the last stitch purlwise with the yarn in front. Row 10, like every other even numbered row in this project, you're going to knit all the way across. You're going to slip those stitch markers as you come across them. And you're going to slip that final stitch purlwise with the yarn in front. Row 11, you start by knitting 9. After that knit nine, you should hit your stitch marker and you're going to slip it over and purl the next two stitches. After that purl two, you want to work the following six stitches over and over until you hit your second marker. You want to knit four and purl two all the way along until your second marker and you should hit that second marker after a purl two. Slip the marker over and knit eight. Finish the row by slipping that stitch purlwise with the yarn in front. Row 12, knit all the way across, slip those markers as you come to them and slip that final stitch purlwise with the yarn in front. The end of row 12 marks the halfway point in the repeat and this is the point that we need to stagger our stitches so that these stockinette blocks now appear here. So the more experienced knitters amongst you will have noticed that actually the first 12 rows are the same two rows repeated over and over until you have these six garter ridges facing you. So if you are an experienced knitter you can also now go away and when I've showed you rows 13 and 14 you just repeat those twice until you have the same six garter ridges. But I am going to go through each row individually because I want my blankets to be accessible to beginners as well as more experienced knitters. Row 13, you want to knit the nine stitches before your marker. Slip that marker over and then knit three. Then you want to work purl two, knit four until three stitches before that second marker. So purl two, knit four until three stitches before your second marker. The three stitches remaining before your marker should come after a purl two and you want to knit those three stitches. Slip the marker over and knit another eight stitches. Slip that final stitch purlwise with the yarn in front. Row 14, same as every other even row, you're going to knit all the way across, slip your markers as you come to them and slip the final stitch purlwise with the yarn in front. Nice and quick and easy. Row 15, you start with knitting the nine stitches before your marker. Slip your marker over and knit another three stitches. Then you want to work purl two, knit four, all the way until you have three stitches left before your second stitch marker. So purl two, knit four, until you have three stitches left before your second marker. The three stitches before your second marker, you just want to knit. 
slip the second marker over and knit another eight stitches. And that final stitch you're going to slip purlwise and pop the yarn in front. Row 16, knit all the way across, slip your markers as you come to them and then slip that last stitch purlwise with the yarn in front. Row 17, you start with knitting the nine stitches before your marker. Slip the marker over and then knit another three stitches. Then you want to work across your row, purling two and knitting four until you have three stitches left before that second marker. So that's purl two, knit four until three stitches before the second marker. You should hit three stitches remaining before your marker after a purl two, and then you're going to knit those three stitches. Slip the marker over, and then knit until you have one stitch left on your left hand needle, and then that final stitch you are going to slip purlwise with the yarn in front. Row 18, just like all the other even rows, you're going to knit all the way across, slip those markers over as you hit them, and then the final stitch of the row, you're going to slip purlwise with the yarn in front. Row 19, you want to knit the first nine stitches and then slip that first stitch marker over. Then you want to knit another three stitches. Our six stitch pattern repeat is purl two, knit four, and you want to work that across until you have three stitches left on your left hand needle before you hit the second marker. So work those six stitches until you have three stitches left before the second marker. Those final three stitches before the marker, you are just going to knit, and they should have come after a purl two. Slip that marker over and then you want to knit eight and slip the final stitch purlwise with the yarn in front. Row 20, you're just going to knit every single stitch, slip those markers as you come to them and then slip that final stitch purlwise with the yarn in front. Row 21 starts with a knit nine. Slip that marker over and knit three. And then you want to work purl two, knit four until three stitches before the second marker. Purl two, knit four until three stitches before the second marker. Row 22, nice and easy. You're going to knit every single stitch. You are going to slip your stitch markers as you come across them and you're going to slip your final stitch purlwise with the yarn in front instead of knitting it. Row 23, knit 9. Slip the marker over and knit another 3 stitches. Then you want to work purl two, knit four, until three stitches before the marker. You won't quite be able to finish a repeat, so you should hit three stitches before the marker after a purl two. Those three stitches before the marker are still worked in pattern, so instead of knitting four, you are going to knit three. Slip the second marker over. And then knit until you have one stitch left on your left hand needle and then slip that final stitch purlwise with the yarn in front. Row 24 is the final row in our repeat and just like every other even numbered row that we've worked we're just going to knit all the way across, slip those markers as you come to them and then slip that final stitch purlwise with the yarn in front instead of knitting it. Your project will obviously be on a much larger scale than mine, but after one repeat, your work should look a little bit like this. 
What you would now want to go away and do is to repeat these 24 rows over and over until your project is about eight centimeters shorter than you want the final length to be. In my case, for this blanket, I worked those 24 rows a total of 11 times. So after this point, I repeated the rows 10 times more for a total of 11 repeats. And you can count your repeats by counting these indented stockinette strips, not these outer edge ones. Once you've worked them, the number of times that you need to work, you need to work rows 1 to 12 once more. And that's what I'm going to go away and do now. Once you've done that, come back and I will show you how to do your border. The reason we work rows 1 to 12 once more after we've finished our pattern repeats, however many of those that you choose to do, is so that you get a blanket that is symmetrical in all four corners. If you were to start your border just after you'd finished a row 24, then your top corners would have this garter stitch and your bottom corners would have this stockinette. So it makes it worthwhile to work rows 1 to 12 once more just to achieve that really nice symmetrical project that you probably all know that I love by now. Once you've worked your rows 1 to 12 once more, we now need to move on to work the top garter stitch border just in the same way that we started our blanket when we worked that initial bottom garter stitch border. The first row of your border will be a wrong side row and you're going to work 15 rows in exactly the same way. You are going to knit every single stitch with the exception of the final stitch and instead of knitting that final stitch you're going to slip it purlwise with the yarn in front. So we are working a repeat of that bottom garter stitch edging, but instead of working 16 rows in this, we are only going to work 15. When you work this first row, you can go ahead and remove your stitch markers from your work because you won't need those anymore. So if you now go away and knit your 15 rows and then come back and I will show you how we work our cast off and finish off our blanket and get it nicely off our needles. The final part of this blanket is the cast off and the type of cast off we work for this blanket is a basic knitted cast off. I'm going to show you really briefly how we work it, but if you would like a more in-depth tutorial, perhaps if you're more of a beginner knitter, then I do have another video that goes over it in much more detail. So it might be a good idea for you to take a look at that before you cast off any blanket that you happen to have on your needles at the moment. Your cast off row should be a right side row, so the right side of your work should be facing you. And you start your cast off by knitting the first two stitches. Don't knit them too tight. You want to maintain a fairly relaxed tension on the cast off or your blanket will pull in and won't lay flat. Once you've knitted those first two stitches, you want to grab this first stitch you knitted, the right hand side stitch, lift it with your left hand needle and lift it over the second stitch you knitted and off that right hand needle. So you've gone from two stitches to one stitch. Then you want to knit one more stitch and repeat the process again. So you're going to lift the right hand stitch over the left hand stitch and off your needle. The golden rule when you are working a basic knitted cast off is never to have more than two stitches on this right hand needle. So aside from when you knit the first two stitches, you're only ever going to be knitting one additional stitch before you lift that right hand stitch over the left hand stitch. And you want to work your way across that final row repeating these steps until you are left with no stitches on your left hand needle and just one loop on your right hand needle. Once you reach a point that you have just this one stitch left on your right hand needle, you can break your yarn, make sure to leave a tail that is at least 20 centimetres long so that you've got enough yarn tail to sew in that end nice and securely. And then you can remove your knitting needles. And when you do this, you want to pull the stitch up to make it bigger. And then you can get rid of your knitting needle because you don't need those anymore. And then I like to secure this final stitch by grabbing the tail, pulling it through the larger stitch and then pulling on that tail nice and gently to tighten it right up. And then you would sew in your end and this little bit would not even be visible. Just a couple of final points to cover. I often get asked, is a blanket reversible? So in the case of Lola, 
no she is not reversible so the rear of the blanket will look something like this not ugly by any means but definitely not reversible the pattern on the back is drastically different to the pattern on the front i also get asked if i have written patterns and the answer to that is yes this blanket has a written pattern available for free on my website and i have linked it down in the description below and i'll also pin a comment for you so you can easily get to it from there as well and that's how you knit my happy accident of a blanket called Lola. I really, really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you have, I would love it if you'd give it a thumbs up. And if you're looking for another blanket to knit that is a little bit different to the one that I've shown you today, then why not take a look at the one that is linked on screen now? Because I think you're going to like it just as much as you have this one. That's all from me for today. And I'll see you again for another video soon.